Is Frederica any good in triangle strategy? In this video, we're going to go over Frederica. I'm not sure if it's Frederica or Fredericia. Um, I, something online said Fredericia, but I think it is Frederica. So we'll just go with that for this video. All right, so is she any good? Uh, where does she excel and should you run her? Uh, I think she's pretty good. Um, you should run her as like a general battle mage who just wants to kill things. Like that's basically all she can do, but she does it really well. And she's generally just like a solid beater to have on your team. So let's just open up the roster here and take a look at her abilities. Okay. So she has really high magic and she's best with like magic accessories because all she cares about is killing things. Uh, so I just have the magic amulet and bracelet on her for plus five magic and immunity to silence. There's not like a ton of silence in the game, but you do want to get as much magic so that's just like kind of a bonus that she can't be silenced okay so she has blessing of fire increases your fire resistance while decreasing your ice resistance so you can see here under her resistances she has a 30 percent resist fire and then a minus 30 ice resistance so she actually takes scaled damage from ice so that's just something to note about her so if there's enemy ice mages you'll want to be pretty careful with her positioning as sometimes they can just flat out one shot her especially if there's an enemy boss that can cast ice uh, her first ability scorch is an aoe ability that can hit up to five units this is one of her this in another ability uh, blazing chains are what you're mostly going to be spamming on her uh, the reason for this is they both use two tp and just just deal good damage and if you have someone like julio or Medina just feeding her TP, she can cast one of these each turn. I prefer Julio to pair with her because he can give her a passive magic buff, but I suppose... Um, well, actually, no, you need to heal with TP Fezzik or Physic or whatever in order to get TP, so you can't give her a buff as well with Medina. So Julio's a little bit better uh, because he just, you know, for free, doesn't use any items, just gives her a TP, transfers a TP, really. And then it gives her a magic and strength buff. But this, the magic buff is what you use it for. So so Scorch is really good. It hits for pretty good damage in, you know, a, a plus shape. So it hits the center and then one above, one below, one to the left, one to the right. So pretty good consistent ability. It also allows you to extend your reach. So if something is one tile out of her casting range, you can indirectly hit it with the AoE. So that's hugely important. Uh, next is Flame Shield. This ability is actually really good. It raises fire resistance and essentially allows units to counterattack when hit with fire. So if you're facing enemy fire mages, spamming flame shield on a unit that's going to be engaging with them or the units that are going to be pushing forward will cause them to take significantly less damage and to like get free chip damage in on the, the fire mage in question. So it's a pretty good circumstantial ability. Uh, you're generally not going to be using it though because there's not a ton of fire mages. Like in every map, I would say there's like, the mages are random, like sometimes they're ice, sometimes they're lightning, sometimes they're fire, sometimes they're wind. So if you just like check the enemies, you can see, and then maybe you use this. Uh, this is like the little bit of utility she gets is from, from this ability and like fire eater. Uh, next is blazing chains. So this ability is her single spike. So if you look at Scorch, it has, in this case, it's 248. Blazing Chains is 331. This thing will kill a lot of enemies in two hits. So if an enemy takes some damage, like if it takes like 20% max HP as damage from another unit, this will usually finish it off. Uh, it's a very solid attack that deals a lot of damage. It's single target and it also reduces movement a little bit. Um, so it does it does help. I mean, it. I wish it reduced movement more, but unfortunately... It just, like, slightly reduces movement. So, I wish it would either, like, snare an enemy for a turn or remove or reduce their movement by, like, three or four or something substantial so they can't move that well, but it's it's mostly used for damage, so it's fine. It's a really good spike. It's really good on bosses just to, like, get, get, get good damage in, so you can't go wrong using it. All right, next is Fire Eater. Grant an ally the ability to absorb fire for three turns. So this can be used on anyone who is going to be getting hit by fire or she can cast it on herself and stand in fire. Uh, the reason this is useful is because of magic ablaze. So if you stand in fire, you actually deal more damage. So she can cast fire eater or flame shield on herself and then stand in fire. 
which will scale her damage, which is good. So, you can't go wrong doing that. Um, I mean, it uses a lot of TP, and, and it costs you a turn to cast either of these and then stand and fire, so you're probably just better off hitting an enemy with two spells, to be honest. And, like, two combat spells instead of prepping yourself and then jumping in the fire. Now, alternatively, you can just jump in fire, <laughs> which is not the wisest thing, because you take 50 damage a turn in fire. I mean, she would probably take... She should take less because of her resistance. Uh, so instead of uh, 50... What would that be, like... 30... Something? Like 35, 37%? Or, I'm sorry, percent. Like 35 damage or something like that, roughly. I'm just, like, ballparking. I don't know the actual number off the top of my head, but... Um, so probably something around that. So she would take reduced damage, but... I suppose you could slap a fire amulet on her to give her more resistance so she can just stand in fire so you wouldn't have to prep. Um, but that's like another alternative thing you can do. Uh, okay, Pillars of Fire. Deal fire type. Magic damage enemies across five horizontal squares and set the ground ablaze. So Pillars of Fire uh, has like a straight line. Like it casts in a straight line from her either up and down or left and right and then it... it, it has like a range of five from that so i can i can show how it works in like a mock-up battle um then obviously i already went over magic ablaze increase your damage when in fire and then we have sunfall this ability is kind of weird because you have to it says cast for one turn which means that when you use it she will not cast it right away and she will just be like casting a spell and then once it's her turn again the spell will go off the problem with this spell is it actually is good for damage, but you have to use all of your TP. Uh, but the problem with it is you have to have someone else basically accelerate her turn so it happens right away. Otherwise, you have no way of knowing that where enemies are going to be at. So I'll, sh I'll show like the pitfalls of that. Uh, but let's go over her upgrades first, and then I'll, I'll just jump into a mock battle. Okay, so... Alright, so her tier 1 upgrades... Um, I, I'm not sure that these increase her magic damage. I have... I, I'm not sure that they do, but, like, these are cheap, so you might as well get them anyways. Like, these ones are not expensive to get. Um, I can't confirm that. If someone in the comments knows, uh, definitely voice, you know, let me know if this if these increase magic damage from spells. I, I, I want to say they don't, and they just increase her weapon damage, and that's it. But I could be wrong. Uh, but they're so cheap, you might as well get them anyways. Um, her, her smacking things with a book is not useful though, it does like very low damage, so you generally want her to be getting fed TP from Julio or Medina, um, it's just not worth it for her to not be casting spells every turn, it, it, because that's, that's the big, the, the big appeal of a mage is to, to cast like big spells to do damage, her auto attacking is just bad, so you don't want to whack things with your tome, unless it's like a last ditch resort or you're a actually able to finish an enemy off with it, which is very rare. Uh, next you have health. Uh, mages are mostly glass cannons, so health is good. Uh, defense is good. Health and defense are good on mages. They have a hard time not dying, so you want to get them some kind of defense. Uh, next you have clear skies, fire damage up. So this ability right here, in my eyes, makes it not viable to run her with Azana. Um, you can still run her during, like, a Rainstorm mission because her damage is still good despite this not proccing. But if you run Azana, she constantly makes the weather not clear. So, and, and this is a much better unit than Azana because she's more consistent and you can control where her AoE lands. Um, so you kind of don't want to run Azana with this. There's, like, very few maps where the weather's bad, so there's, like, two or three. Uh, and this is my second playthrough, and so far there's been like two maps, three maps, where the weather's bad. So this usually triggers, this is worth getting, you want to get this. Uh, but you also don't want to run Azana with her, because Azana wants there to be a, a constant rainstorm and stuff like that. Alright, increased magic, you want it, you need it, it's more damage. Um, Scorch damage up, or Blazing Chains damage up, you can switch between them, depending on if you need more AoE or more single target damage. So depending on the enemy density, one is better than the other. Both are really good. Once you unlock one, you unlock both. So this is definitely something you want to get. This is a huge ability. KO TP plus. You want this for sure. Grants one TP when you defeat an enemy. So if you kill 
an enemy, you get TP back. I'm pretty sure this only can proc once, even if you kill multiple enemies, and I'll actually test this in this video. I'm pretty sure because I've killed multiple enemies before and still just gotten one TP. But I'll test to confirm in a mental mock battle against weak enemies I can one-shot. Um, so, But this is a huge ability because what it lets you do is as long as she's finishing enemies off, she profits a TP, which allows her to cast more aggressive spells. And then Julio can feed uh, TP to something else, or Medina can feed TP to something else. So this is really good for management and just keeping her casting spells every turn, assuming that she's finishing enemies off. But even in general, like on, on average, it's going to be proccing a few times a match, and it's still worthwhile. Okay, this is just Sunfall, that ability I outlined earlier, that you have to cast to return, and then her final upgrade, uh, which I haven't gotten yet, just increases her damage more. Uh, the reason I haven't unlocked it is because even though I'm on New Game Plus and I'm like almost halfway through the game, um, there's it's it's like hard to get Superior Fiber. It's it's just a hard thing to get, and there's other units that need it. So all these things, there's like a few units that need ten Superior Fiber for these final upgrades, but it's just you want more magic. Um, do you want Sunfall first? I would say no. I would say Sunfall. It could be good with, like, Medina, because she can just constantly, like, basically now things, you know? Um, Benedict's ability that causes you to take a turn early. Uh, in that case, maybe it's good, but then she burns through all of her TP, no matter how much she has to use this. So I don't really think it's that worthwhile. I'd rather just get the magic. So learn from my mistake and just grab the magic. Uh, but obviously I have to test these abilities if I'm going to be making these tutorials, so... So it's kind of forced that I have to opt for the ability for first before the, the min-maxing. Okay. So let's go test her out really quick. Uh, some of the some of the videos, like the battles run too long, so I am I am just gonna stick to mental damn it, my, my mental mock battles. Alright. I'll just do an easy one just so I can quickly show uh, where she wants to be and what she wants to do. So we'll just do this one because it's also a farm. I'll just run her and like two other units just to kind of show. All right, so for mage positioning, okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna break it down it into like I think like a few, two or three categories. So there's like positioning, there's what abilities to use and when, and then there's like adaptation. So like what the enemies are doing will determine how you're gonna change your your behavior. Uh, so let's go to unit placement. Uh, select units. I'm gonna turn. I'll just have like a very basic bare bones team. So let's do something like uh, Let's see. All right, so we have a bruiser a glass cannon an assassin type a healer and Frederico, okay So let's change their positioning. So generally mages never want to be in the front lines and they always want to be just behind your front lines to assist them in damage and to kill things. So in this case, I'd probably set this up like this. Or maybe even like that. That's probably fine. Um, obviously, I'd run Julio, but I'm just this is just a Frederica video. But she can kill these for TP, so we'll just begin. And these are low level, so we'll kill them in one hit. But the point is you understand like where she should be. She should never be getting surrounded by enemies. She should never be overextended. She should only peek her head out just enough to maybe get hit by one enemy, but to especially nuke them. So, okay, so we'll just, we'll just pass some turns just to, like, get them advancing on us. Okay. So we'll just do this. We'll just have him move here. We'll just haste her. It'll, it'll cause her to still move <laughs> in, in on turn three. All right, here we go. Okay. So, from this position, she can hit an enemy, this one that's approaching. Now, if I put her here, she's dead. So you can see here all these things that can hit her. If I put her here, she's probably dead. If I put her here, she's probably dead. So even though only three enemies can hit her, between two of them, if this were if they were the same level, she would die. So her best position would probably be like something like this, or even something like this. 
So you can see she can get hit by a few things. So here's Scorch increasing her range. You can see here. So that's her effective range, and Scorch increases it. This is a small map, so the enemies are very clustered together, but you can still defensively use her. So, like, you could hit something and then move. And I could have made, like, a little bit of a wall. Like, you would have more units than this. I'm just showing, like, here's my front lines, here's my back lines, here's my flanker type of thing. Um, so, all right, let's show pillars. So here's how pillars works, if you're curious about it, if you don't have it unlocked. So it hit, it does hit five squares. The other squares just cut off because of the map geometry, because you can't access over here as you can see I'm trying to go over there it won't let me so in this situation I only can hit like one enemy uh, but because I can kill this this is ideal but obviously you weren't you're not going to be one-shotting enemies that are your level so so you want to kind of make a barrier for her so that other enemies can't harass her okay we'll just have Milo do things that Milo does actually we'll do this the power of love Literally. <laughs> literally, and it's the skill. Literally and metaphorically. That's the power of love. Alright, we'll just like nuke some of these guys. Oh, we <laughs> he didn't one shot him. That's unfortunate. Okay. We'll just do this just to clear up some of these. Now these are low level enemies, these tactics of me just like running in and killing four things in one hit are not going to work <laughs> in enemies on, on like your level in hard mode. Uh, but the main the main takeaway is that for positioning, you want to be in the back lines. So there's like, there's like three types of uh, units in my mind, or like types of positioning. There's the front lines, the mid line, and then like the back line. And this is all from like Guild Wars. So, like, the frontliners are, like, bruisers like Saranoa or Eridor or things that can stay in the front lines, take a few hits, and survive and deal some damage. That's, like, the front lines. Um, so, for example, even though F Roland is, you know, a melee unit and has high damage, I would argue he's a glass cannon, so he's more of a midline kind of guy. He wants to stay closer to the team than the enemy. And he wants to approach the enemy when the opportunity is good and then just like clean them up or deal fat damage. And similarly, uh, that's what Frederica wants to do. She wants to be near the midline. Um, I only moved Gila up just because these are lower level enemies, but she would always be behind everything else for the most part. Or she'll only pu push, push up like to get something healed and she'll take minimal risk. Uh, but I'll actually arrange these in a second. So you can kind of get a feeling. Alright, so the, so here's like our midline. Here's our front line. I'll just like... Actually, yeah, let's collect this. Alright, so here's our midliners. And I would, I would argue Milo could be a front liner to some degree, but she can't be... Like, a lot of these assassins can't have all these things attacking them. So... Alright, let's just do this. Alright, so, so assassin type characters like flanks, they can play like on the flanks as long as they're not exposed to the enemies. So like if there's two enemies on a flank and Milo controls one of them with Tempt, then she's perfectly safe because she generally can't get one-shotted by a basic enemy. Um, so she can safely Tempt something and then duel something else as long as she can catch heals or heal herself. She's fine. So, alright, so here's our so front lines, mid lines back lines and then like flanks. So I guess there's like four movement types and the flanks can hang out with everyone and just kind of rotate into any of these roles as needed because they have crowd control so they can often like shut enemies down. But Frederica wants to be kind of kind of semi exposed but not really. She wants to be casting spells on things and ideally she wants to cast spells without getting hit. So that's where she wants to be positioned and this is universal. Like if you have her in the front lines and like two enemy archers can hit her, she's dead. Unless she has like invincibility from Benedict, or some buff, or there's like some circuit, or there those archers are blinded, she cannot get hit twice. Uh, so same thing is true of most mages. So the mages have to be taking minimal risk while chipping away at the aggressive enemies. That's like the big thing. So that's that's what I would argue her positioning should be. And she's a very simple unit. Um, 
Let's let's actually try the standing in fire thing. Let's throw an oil thing. Let's see. We'll just use a normal oil jug. I don't even use normal ones. Large ones are the ones that are useful. All right, so we threw an oil jug. All right, so let's set this on fire. Okay, so let's check out her her damage on Scorch. 286. To 310. So that's a that's a pretty decent damage increase. And then let's check her uh, damage from just chilling out. I can use in tandem to make her turn come faster. Let's do that. It won't be much faster, but we'll just do it anyways. All right, we'll heal her to full health just so we can see. Okay, she does still take 50 even though she has resistance. Okay, so that's good to know. All right, now let's try using a uh, fire eater. Fire absorption, cool. All right, let's see what happens while standing in the fire. So this is important to know because you can the damage boost from standing in fire could be useful. Uh, obviously, the only way to trigger it for sure would be to put oil or have a like a flammable surface. So if there's no flammable surface, you would need to use oil, which is. All right, fire absorption. Okay, so she just basically, nothing happened, okay. And then it doesn't seem to give a buff or anything, it just straight up, yeah, converts fire damage to HP. Okay, so this is actually a pretty good tanking ability for enemy fire mages as well. Um, then of course, flame shield uh, just causes like counter attack. So if you wanna just stand in fire. Now obviously you can see I had to waste a turn plus TP, so I don't think this is the best thing. I could have just hit the dude with two spells. Uh, if enemies are going to be pushing you, this could be useful, especially if you abuse uh, Medina's two-turn thing. So, so yeah, that's pretty much it for uh, Frederica. She's a really good unit. She does really good damage. I forgot to grab those foils, but it's, it doesn't matter. Um, all right. So if you like this type of video, like these character guides, definitely leave a like, drop a comment, and subscribe. Uh, let me know if I missed anything or if there's any interesting strategies. Um, that you discovered for her or like, you know, unit combinations. I'm going to be going over advanced things in future videos. So for now, I'm just going to keep it simple and per unit, like what they generally want to do on the battlefield. Uh, but yeah, thanks for checking this out and I'll see you in the next one.